everybody, it's Cinnamon Coney, your art sharp, and today we're doing day two of 12 days where we stream every day live with a different winter theme painting. Today we're going to be painting these polar bears swimming underwater from a below them view. Um, this is something I'm really excited to share with you today because I uh, have done a lot of paintings like this actually generally starring horses, but I love the sort of abstract nature of it and the beautiful flow and the fact that it's actually, once you understand a couple things, fairly doable. This is a two hoot painting. You can check the hoot ratings in the description below. Also in that little description below, where sometimes you have to ask it to show you more, is a link to the website where you can find the traceable. If you're like, I can do this whole painting, but I'm just not up for drawing the bears. That's okay. Cause we have a traceable for that today. And also the materials for this particular video, which are pretty limited today. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. And he is going to be tracking me around the studio, answering your questions or passing them on to me, and just making sure that I'm aware of what's happening with you because I'm in here in this part of the studio and I don't actually have access to the chat. Nope. And so you, he makes sure that I see it. And you wouldn't know that we have a full house here already. We're I just, don't even know that. Like we, we we started up and it was like, you know, like bang out the door. We were 250, 260, 270. We're already at 360, 370. It's just they, they keep going. We're going to be at over 400 here in just about two, three seconds. So this is awesome. Thank we're you. We're all ready to paint some polar bears, I think. I think so. I've been asked for polar bears for a while. So I'm really glad to be taking this chance to sort of come back and visit a lot of those community requests that you guys have given me over the last year and make sure that I get those in. Oh, let's get started. Oh, they're so ready. By the way, they love your necklace. Oh, they're, thank you. They're just like oh, super sharp. And, and, and everybody's very excited about these very, very cute polar bears. I'm, I'm excited about the polar bears too. They like them quite a bit. I do. I'm really into them. All right. So this is an 11 by 14 canvas that I painted with acrylic. Um, I have a blank one here that we will be starting from. Mm -hmm. Now you said 11 by 14, but could they scale this down to smaller sizes? This will scale very easily because you can just add more water or take away a little water. So feel like you can scale this big or small. Hmm. Some pieces, they have objects coming on and off and so they don't scale easily, right? Especially if you're changing the aspect ratio. In other words, the the distance of height and width between canvases so like yeah. a 9 by 12 is the same as 11 by 14 is the same as an 18 by 24 right mm -hmm. yeah and a 16 by 20 is the same as an 8 by 10 but if you were to take a 9 by 12 and go to a 16 by 20 you'd have a little adjustment to make ah that makes sense this will do that easily hmm. so we have this canvas over here it has wishes wishes well our first wish is of course for polar bears yes because they are going through a lot, they're endangered, and they have some stuff happening. And, you know, we just want them to be safe. And we also want the humans that live near them to be safe, everybody to be safe and have environment. Um, there were several wishes for safe surgeries, a happy pregnancy. And this one specifically really reached me. Lily wishes that her parents would just forgive each other and get along. And I think that's a really incredible wish. And I wish that, too, because... I really wish that all families, especially over the holiday season, can just come back together and repair any burnt bridges that they might be going through. Yeah. All right, so that's our canvas and our wishes. Let's look at our, our materials. So our palette today is a very limited palette. And often when doing underwater scenes, unless you're doing a lot of coral, it's going to be limited. My favorite cool aqua water formula is thalo blue and thalo green with indian yellow and i've got some titanium white here so the first step to this canvas is i'm going to put out and don't worry i've got more of this paint i know it looks like it's at the end of its tube which it is but it's because we are definitely using it up so i'm going to put out when i can squeeze out oh there it goes of my green tube just get all that goody good out and then I'm going to squeeze out what I can on my blue tube. And then you get those brand new tubes you get to use. Then I get to get into my brand new tubes. That's a very satisfying thing when you get it's, to... It's just my favorite. <laughs> it's like, this tube has come to an end, and now I get new, fresh tube. And it's sale time, so all the titanium white is sold out everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was tough. <laughs> So I'm going to take a palette knife, and the first thing I'm going to do is I put up my phthalo blue, and I put up my phthalo green, and I put up my titanium white. I'm going to mix these two and make a phthalo turquoise. 
So I'm going to take about, this is like one little section of the blue and an equal section of the green. And I'm going to just mix these two paints thoroughly together. So this is a thorough mix. A lot of times I do painterly mixes where there's a lot of streaking in the paint. And that sort of helps create a texture or another secondary effect on the canvas. But with this, I want it to be a nice base turquoise because this is one of my dark colors. In, in, the, in the course of this painting, the blue and the aqua are my blacks, interestingly enough. I'll put out my Indian yellow in a minute. If you don't have Indian yellow, yes, you can use cad yellow. That will be fine. It won't hurt you. No. You just have a slightly, slightly different result. To get this painting um, done successfully, what I want to do is, if I put this over here, I'll show you. We have the lightest range in the water, and then we have the darkest range. And then right between those two shades is a medium tone, which is kind of right almost in this area. I'm going to paint the whole canvas first with that mid-tone of blue. And that's going to set me up for success in my underwater paintings. That's especially important as you go big, creating that underpainting or that acrylic ground to begin. Gotcha. It really will help you. I'm going to take a big brush. This is my number 30 Art Sherpa brush. And I'm going to drag off the extra water. This brush is for acrylic paint, so it doesn't hold too much water or too little water. And I'm going to start a load. So I'm going to pull out. Some of my color and you can see that that's quite turquoise quite thalo turquoise and i'm going to get into my white and i'm going to get my mid-tone which is right just a little lighter than there and if you don't get it exact it won't hurt you it's the base color that you want to be working from so i'm going to start out i kind of go across at first but I'm going to change it up in a minute so that there's an implied brush stroke that also backs up what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to come and pull a little of this out again. Get a little of my white. I don't want to be my lightest color because I need that to show the sunlight coming through. If you need to dip a little water on the just edge of your brush to thin your paint, you can do that. And now as I'm coming down, I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to curve the brush stroke. Can you guys see how I'm oh, yeah. doing the lens, the curving? That creates a foundation that we can really see. I just want to get a nice solid color where the entire canvas <laughs> is painted in this acrylic. So everyone was talking about the, or I thought everyone was talking about the circular strokes that you were making, uh -huh. you know, and that you were making this ring-like shape. Uh-huh. I think they were just talking about your ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I was like, what ring? What ring are they? Uh, <laughs> oh, ring, that ring. <laughs> Yeah, you'll, so later on you have to show them that. They're like, I I totally am happy to. <laughs> okay. So just coming along here. I'm gonna flip this over because I have a lip on my uh, easel here, and it can get in my way when I'm painting. And I'm gonna just finish off the canvas. Just finishing it off. Now as we paint our water and we're putting in our highlights and our ripples and our reflections, if something shows through, reflects through, mm -hmm. it's going to be a watercolor. And that's going to help us a great deal. I'm going to rinse this out. I won't be needing it again. I'm going to dry it off and lay it to the side where I'm going to remember to wash it. Mm-hmm. 
I'm going to take this minute and dry my canvas so I can begin the next layer and also so I can flip it back over and not get totally painted. Okay. So I'm gonna come over and say, hey guys, thank you for coming and joining us today. I'm gonna, I, you know, like I, I've got this uh, really interesting thing up. Someone said uh, to me before the show that um, there was a place called Churchill, Canada, that was the capital of the world for polar bears. And I was like, well, I didn't know that. So I looked it up. Sure enough, Churchill, Canada is like this place which they, you know, they have, they have a whole polar bear segment there. So I thought that was really interesting. I thought that passed that along to you. Uh, I thought that'd be pretty neat. And oh my gosh, we have so many people here already with us. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate uh, having... Uh, such a wonderful group of people to come join us in the lives. Um, uh, thank you for coming and joining us. Please do share up your pictures. It's uh, something that we really love to see is what, you know, how you guys paint, all the, all the things that you guys do from all this. And you can, you can put those up on Facebook, on, on uh, Pinterest, Instagram, up on our website. And while you're out on our website, uh, you should check out uh, the project page we have for e each one of these videos that you see here. There's a link to that in the description below. And uh, that'll let you find out all of the materials you need, uh, information to things like the traceable, the reference images, things like that, so that it's uh, easier for you to be able to paint the painting. Hey, Cinnamon. How are you doing? Pretty good. Just telling everybody about, like, the cool website stuff. We Where the resources for. are? Yeah. We like to give the resources. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do. It's helpful to have some resources when you're painting. So, um, I'm going to sip my coffee. Just sip your coffee. Sippy, mm -hmm. sippy time. This, this, is, this is a nice, you know, I was just saying, it's such a wonderful morning. We've got like almost 500 people here hanging out with us on this beautiful, you know, like a Sunday afternoon where we're painting some polar bears together. And isn't that just sort of a pleasant thing to have all those people painting together? All of it. I think that is, I like, I love doing this with my Sunday afternoon and I love that you love doing this with your Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty exciting. So, so we got to plan a strategy for the next part of our painting. We do? We do. What kind of strategy do we need? Well, we've got to put in two objects, which are polar bears, but we need to get in some fluid water reflection that we really don't want to have too broken around our bears, right? But we can't go too far because, you know, we're sizing them into our canvas and we're finding our placement, and we really want to see them when we put in our dark reflections down here. But one thing that we can do now, right, before we put in our bears, and it's always good where you're going to have a long sweeping stroke, if you can get it in before you necessarily put your object in. Yep. And I'm just going to use, um, let me even get a bigger braid. I'm going to use just a braid. I was going to use a cat's tongue, but I'm going to use a braid. It really, at this stage, it's not about necessarily, oh, i got to take this to the brush bar, the, um, you know, shape of the brush, but more the feeling of the stroke. Mm. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag off the extra. This is bristles and synthetic uh, filament so it doesn't over soak. And for this, I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to pull a little more of my phthalo blue into my turquoise mixture. It's just a little more phthalo blue. I'm going to wipe off so I don't have too much pigment because it's a very powerful pigment. And I'm going to get white and I'm going to mix it right into where I have my base shade. And I want to make sure I'm about one shade lighter, one value step lighter than my um, turquoise. So if I were to make a black and white photo, would this appear to be one shade of gray lighter would be what I would be going for. And I'm going to just make sure that there's some, a little more blue in that, that there's some lighter, Kind of light coming down. I'm dry brushing. I'm letting a lot of the canvas show through. Right? I'm blending. I'm just putting that in. Can you guys see that? It's like a loose mix on my brush. Yeah. It's giving me a couple values. They get a little more white. The apex of the light in our canvas is going to be focused really here between the two bears. We can lay a foundation. You don't want to go too light. Right? You don't want to be too light or you won't enjoy that. Just adding in some white. You can see we're just starting to put in this little bit 
And that little bit of tonality is going to be your friend in a minute. Notice how I'm blending this though. I go back over it like when I brush it up while it's still wet and I soften it. This is not dissimilar to when I like might soften a blush on my face or just anything that you want to dust out. Kind of a soft dusting motion. You can see I'm not pressing super hard with my brush. I'm just on the tips of the bristles going back and forth, blending this out, dusting this out. So it's not even wet into wet, but we're just smoothing out our dry brushing while it's still, while it's still wet. So we've got a little bit of our carry through stroke happening here, right? We're gonna take a minute and make sure that this area through this area is still light enough. So I'm gonna get back into my turquoise mix, which I made a lot of, and some more white. Just so that we're for sure being as light as we need to be. See, I'm coming in the center of the canvas and I'm making soft smiles. Soft smiles right off. And then can you see how these are close to each other in in value? Just just a little bit lighter. So yeah, Wendy's asking, are you dry brushing? I am dry brushing. Okay. I'm just dusting back and forth. And then where, see it goes dry brush, you can see how it's like the dry brush. Mm. Then I come back with my bristles and I soften everything. See how I do that? So it's a softened dry brush. It's a softened dry brush. It is a dry brush. And that's something people don't realize, like you can really soften a dry brush. Because here, I'm gonna zoom in on that. Because even when I super zoom in on it, you'll see that if between, if you will, well, See, there you go. So you'll notice that the, there's, there's still blue underneath the white. Do we have a white practice canvas? I can show the stroke. I can show the technique. Uh, I, can, well, I can grab you one, yeah. Okay. okay. Everybody really liked that last time. And that way you guys get this. And I can show it over white so you can see it happening starkly. And starkly. starkly, darkly. Sometimes if I show you or demo a stroke or an event, just anything, I'll, I'll gesso over it. <laughs> not open. Nothing is open. So uh, sometimes if I demonstrate a stroke or how it begins and ends, it can help you guys realize how to make that happen for yourselves at home. And then you find that you've got a new technique and you're feeling much more successful in your painting, which is always the goal that you guys feel successful. So when we're dry brushing, I'll pull out some of my turquoise and we'll be maybe a little darker. All right, so I've got my bristle brush here. When you dry brush, you notice that I didn't dip in the water and I've got my paint loaded both sides of the brush. That's how I pull it in. And I come with very light pressure. So you can see that the tooth of the canvas picks up the paint, but I'm not getting into the valleys. Now, if I were to press harder, right, I'd get more of this effect if I was pressing too hard, right? I wanna be up on the tip of my bristles. When I'm up on the tip of my bristles and the paint is still wet, I can softly go through just on the tip of them, see? And start to soften it out. And this is what I mean, it's like, a, it's like blush. I'm taking the paint pigments and I'm just taking the brush back and forth. Can you guys see how it's going back and forth? Yeah. Over it and I'm softening it. And now, not having the, the, as much water on there makes that paint move around slower. If I had too much water, say my brush was too wet, this is what I'd be getting. Yeah, see, then it gets, everything gets wet. It's wet. And the issue with this, even though it's a very nice glaze, is it's actually not going to bind to the canvas. Hmm. Right? So if my brush is wet. It also looks different. It looks more transparent. It's very transparent, right? And now I'm not binding to the canvas. I'm just sort of laying a pigment with water over it. Uh, and later when I paint on top of it, it can lift up. It can flake off. It can give me some trouble. I need to make a transparency like that with, um, 
a glazing medium. Yeah, it also seems that it's easier to continue to lay paint over the dry brushing technique, whereas that wet one just keeps moving around. It moves. It's it's this is this would be too wet. Gotcha. Okay. So that's what good. you want is this. So hopefully that helps. That's very much. That's very helpful. And it let my canvas dry. So not only did we learn a thing, we let the canvas dry. Thank you for not leaving me alone. <laughs> so the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to put my bears in so I know where they are. And like I mentioned, the we bears. have a traceable like we like to have. That's and my first website. step with my traceable is to place it where I want the bears located on my canvas. And because this is where my focal is and the way I've lit them, where the light is around the faces here and kind of like haloing around them, it's best that they be at this part of the apex because that's where the, the, the tonality is telling us the light is coming in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape these guys down. This is a low tack tape and it won't uh, rip my paint off the canvas. So that's always nice. <sighs> you know, and I give it a look, make sure I've got them where I want them. And then I'm going to use my Serol transfer paper. I'm going to use yellow. And I'm switching to yellow because I've been having some trouble with the red guys. It shows up better on camera so you guys can see it. But it's been having a tendency to bleed through my light colors in my test paintings. Gotcha. So I'm going to do yellow, which is going to work nicely with the colors that we have in the painting. Once I have everything affixed where I know it's not going to be moving around, being crazy. Okay, fine. <laughs> my recycled Just tape. Just a little crazy. My recycled tape. We'll see. It came in useful. Hmm? It was useful. It's, well, I always save it. <laughs> Just for this purpose. I can probably get a couple more uses out of it again. I don't know how many transfers I've gotten out of these serial papers. I'm just going to go around my object and trace this on. When I put these guys in, I laid them in with gesture sketches, which is interesting to watch, but if you're new, isn't really helpful to you getting the job done. <laughs> That's something we do more in the big art quest where I show more of that process of like, how do I create the shape of this figure? How do I get something done? All right, so I'm making the little foreshortened paw here. And that just means it's coming at me and I'm seeing it in a perspective. So he's a really simple, fun shape. And then this other little bear is a really simple, fun shape. I really enjoy this piece for its easy shapes and its lovely, cheerful, cool colors. Because even though it's cold, it's weirdly warm. It's just the strangest thing. How you doing, babe? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm over here. Everyone's talking about how much they really love the serial paper in chat as well. Yeah, it's some cool stuff. And it can be hard to find a transfer paper that um, likes to go over acrylic. Traditional uh, graphite transfer paper sometimes won't mm -hmm. um, go on the acrylic because it's, you know, it's a thermoplastic poly polymer. Yeah. Neves, is, yeah, Neves and Kim's him and a lot of the ladies out here, they, they use this stuff and they think it's pretty good. So. Yeah, I've been enjoying it quite a lot, except for the red, which I'm not loving the bleed through. That's interesting. So basically what I'm checking is that I got my transfer on and that I can see my bears, which I can. You may not. How, now how big are your bears, approximately? So. Nikki, Nikki was like, ah, how are you to make sure, I, you know, she wants to make sure that hers are relatively sized. All right, yours, let's, right? let's size something. This is the smaller size of golden paint. This is the two fluid ounce. Don't you have a, is there a tape measure over there? I don't know where it Where'd went. Where did your T-square go? I think I used it somewhere else to square oh, something no. up. Otherwise, that's, this is, didn't I have like a two? I felt I had put a small, tiny ruler for this very purpose over here. And not, can you imagine where it went? Anyways, tube of paint. Here you go. Here's a ruler. Okay. That'll be more informative than, you know, say my tube of paint size relationship. So this is an 11 by 14 canvas. The first bear is about three inches from the left side edge. The second bear is a, almost just shy of about three inches. Almost, if you just get his little furthest butt, his closest butt, he's like actually two inches from the closest edge. 
This bear is about five and a half inches long. And at his widest point, he's about three. And this guy, he's more of an angled little fellow. So he's about from his little toe to his little nose. You see that's almost seven. And then from his little paw to his back, he's about four. But that's because of his curve. I mean, like at his little thin part, he's only about like under two inches. So that's how they size out. And this is about them at the bellies from each other. And this is them at the nose. They have about an, just under an inch. If you look at that, an inch and three quarters. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Between noses. Hopefully that puts some placement for you on the canvas. If that was a thing you wanted to know. Yes. I know, I know. That's very handy. <laughs> so now we get to start putting in um, some of our values and some of our stuff. We know where our bears are. So that's going to be a little bit easier when we're doing that. So let's go through and start picking up some of that value set. And you can see it's quite bright up here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out. I've still got my number 10 Cambridge here. It's just a bright. I'm going to pull a lot of white into my brush. So that I'm getting a, a shader value that's lighter than the background. Right? And I'm going to come here. I'm going to, I just want to make sure we're lighter than the background. That's what we're going to be working towards and Doop. trying to achieve. And you can see where it's nice to have some carry through strokes. So if we, you know, halt or get intimidated by our bears, picking up some more white. So it's a lot to get this. And I'm feathering out. If you're not catching the dry brush, you could probably use glazing medium. Uh, the golden. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're lightening that up. We're raising that value. Oh, there you go. It's a smidge, smidge of the thalo. Just making sure we're Pulling down a little bit. I'm going softly. And if I lose the ability to get the blend that I want, I will switch. To a glazing. Now, see, it's nice that the yellow, I can still hold the yellow. Line, so I'm not having to worry about that too much. And I'm going to make sure that my bears aren't pure white. Right? I don't want pure white bears. I mean, well, their bears are themselves pure white, but I mean this light hair because I need to be able to put a real bright, hot highlight between them to show the sunlight is just pouring through. I'm just going between them. And then as I'm coming down, you can see I'm doing that dry brush feathering blending thing, can't you? Mm-hmm. This here is why it's nice to have a brush that is a bristle, but also for acrylics. It doesn't get mushy because it really, really does this very well. All right, so I've got that in, and that looks pretty darn good. Yeah. Now I'm going to start putting in some water effects. You know, soften anywhere I need to. See how easily that softens? Oh, yeah. Soften, 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 soften. And every time we add this layer, it just enforces that the, the water is happening here. So we need to put in some dark values. I'm going to rinse this out. And I may switch to um, a smaller brush that's going to give me a little bit of control. I'll put this here. And we're going to start putting in these like dark values at the bottom. I will grab my number eight cat's tongue. Because it's got, you know, a nice flat and a point to it. But you could do a round or bright here. That would be okay. I'm going to get it wet, drag off the extra water. I'm going to pull out some of my turquoise. 
and get a little of my white into it, but it's going to be much darker. See how this is darker? Mm -hmm. So let's put some of these dark, dark little shadows into here. So I'm going to come from my bear's butt on the right hand side, right where it starts to curve around. I'm going to kind of come up. I'm going to wiggle down. Come out and then I'm going to just very loosely brush this dark value. I'm going to let the canvas show through underneath. Make sure that I'm following the convex of what I have going on. I'm going to put a little value right here. Now we're going to come here just over from this first reflection and just very softly letting the brush just skip over. Swing down, come back up, smooth out. And then smooth out. And so you can see how it's letting the paint show through underneath and having little pops of darker colors. Dip in the water a little bit. And come over here. And I'm just going to be building these values down here. So up in the upper left. Let's just brush in softly following the convex that we painted a slight shadow. And maybe some of the shadow comes down very lightly on a stroke, swings back. See how it makes an S curve? Mm hmm. You can shade some of that. Softly shading some of that. Let's come down a bit from this. And put some streaks in. And a little bit here. Then we've got a little bit to talk about in the center with this aqua. I'm going to maybe lighten it with my white a little bit. Come right here between. No. Where your bears are just softly. See, I'm just very softly over the surface of the canvas. Now, Tammy was curious. Hmm. Uh, why didn't you use green for the sea? Why? Because it's not green. So, but you could if it made you happy. So you, you just like to having the, the blue cast to it. So well, you... uh, what I work from, yeah. Had a blue in the Arctic, things are um, brighter and crisper and cooler. Hmm. And you... They are they're not really green, though they can get into the greens, which is why the thalo turquoise is very strong for this. Ah. And will make you think more of icebergs and those types of events. That so then we sense. have this little mark here. We've got some brushing here. We've again created a shadow with the convex and a little bit here. And we're going to also make some stronger little marks that are going to come down here. I'm going to come off from the side. I'm going to add this. Can you see how soft that dry brush is? Oh, yeah. And he needs something from between his legs. There we go. This is just soft. You can get things wet when you need it wet. Come all back over the other side. I like to kind of seesaw from both sides so that I can keep track of how my water is reflecting and convexing. So now I get to make a stronger um, little dark reflection here. And so first I'm going to come down the side. You see me wiggling my brush. Right? Just making sure I've got that initial shadow. And then let's pull... A shadow forward, wiggle back. Every once in a while, you want to wiggle back, show that it's got some reflection. I'm going to just pull this out more to a point. And I'm going to come back. See, I've wiggled back again.
There we go. And maybe a little bit here. I don't take out all the light. And I haven't even come in yet and put in my darkest dark. I'm just putting in this next shadow. We've got lots to do with it. So let's come on under this tendril that we put out. Let's also add a little bit there. A little bit here. Let's come back to this side. So painting pool water, painting anything swimming is about hitting these highlights and hitting these values and these shapes and putting them together like a puzzle that you're looking at. We're going to come to this side and just very softly make sure that this is smoothly, softly kind of darkened and addressed through the corner. You can see that the blue is shining through. We're doing soft dry brushing. So we have some nice little values happening there. Now, I'm going to sip my coffee and then I'm going to put in the next darker shadow and then some highlights. And oh, that's, good. The highlights pops it all in. So Luana was asking, and this is a good time to ask this, can you use a filbert? Yes. That'd be good. Yeah. In this space, you want to use the brush that gives you control where you can thicken a stroke and lighten a stroke where it is stiff enough that you can dry brush and blend with it. Mm -hmm. And that you feel like, oh, I can, I can get this crazy random shape here and not feel too stressed about it. Now, everyone is just passing along how much they really love your ring. Well, uh, thank you very much. And, and, where, and where did that come from? This is Betsy Johnson. So you're a big fan of hers. Mm -hmm. I am. So. I think she's like kind of the bomb. Yeah. So I got to get on her workout program. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> so job. now I've got my phthalo blue here. And I'm going to mix a little of my turquoise into it because we don't want it to seem like it's not part of the composition but where it comes more to this blue it's going to feel a little colder in the water and this is a pretty dark color so let's come here and see if we can't put in maybe a little I'm coming off the side little reflection it comes out jags back this Let's shade that in. And then, you know, you can have a nice little dark shadow under this. I like to pull one soft one. See how soft that is? It's thicker when I pull off of him, and then as I release the stroke, I lighten it up. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to take a very light stroke, so I'm going to press lightly, press down, and then release. That's another little water event that we're talking about. You can always get a little white into this. You know? And then let's give ourselves another little bluer reflection. Coming down, and I'm going to shadow some of this. I go press, release, press, like calligraphy. And I'm also pulling the stroke, stroke down, and that's going to help me. Mm -hmm. You can keep going. It's always fun to sort of keep going. I'm going to come along this and darken some of this reflection. So what this is is the way that light reflects, refracts through water and the motion and the way the waves are impacting it. And that's all you're really painting. So in this corner is the is very dark. We may even come back with another little bit of phthalo to cool it up and darken it. I'm gonna pull this down the corner. And this is more solid. You can see I'm making this a much more solid color. A little blue.
I come up right here through these and break that up. And let's bring that down. Make sure my reference is there for me to reference. <laughs> And again, if at any point your paint is just feeling too dry and it's not doing what you want, you know, we'll get into the glazy medium and we'll make it behave. I just want to make these sort of random water effects. If there's a little stroke that goes up, I press a little harder and then I pull out and that's how I get it to taper. And any brush, it's about that. Your, your brush stroke is thick when you press and thin when you release. And a lot of people have trouble with their brush stroke because they don't realize that they're very heavy handed. Oh. And, and that's, you know, heavy handed, be push, they push a little too hard? They push too hard on the brush. I'm just coming through here and just making sure this is nice. And we can put a nice little dark value under him so it's going to come up. I just push up. Yeah. It's a neat shape. His, his little feet are affecting the water like they do. I'm going to push this back into this random little teardrop and just pull this off lightly over here. Get a little more white on here. In the center, everything gets lighter. I want to make <coughs> sure that I'm talking about that when I come in. And I'm probably going to have to pull this lightly, lightly down before I get the highlights in. So I'm getting some nice little variance in my water. I'm getting some tonality. I can come to the other side. Again, this is the thalo into the turquoise, so it's cooling it. Yep. And we know that this corner is darker. Oh. Sorry, right here, this corner is darker. Sorry, I a little cough there. It's okay. I'm going to shade that right now. Look at that. This corner right here, darker. I'm going to bring some value here, kind of roughly reflecting, letting some stuff shine through. And right here, maybe I'll pull back a reflection. I just press and zigzag back in a little S stroke. And I took a little water and I'm just making sure that this is just soft right here. And there's another interesting little wave that's dark. It kind of pushes up, comes back and down. So we're just building this up, a rinse. I'm going to look in the camera and I'm going to evaluate. I'm sure I need to lighten this through here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to need to add some highlights as I'm coming through to get this to pop and resonate like water. I'm hoping the cameras can see this dynamic range because, again, I'm painting in aqua. Yeah. I think we're doing a better job of it today. It's, I mean, you know, we're not, we're not super perfect between the two of them, but I think we're doing a pretty good job. Like of on my monitor, range. it's crazy. Yeah. Well, your, your, your monitor isn't necessarily a matching one either, so. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm like always worried about you guys at home because I'm like, if it's like my monitor, you're not seeing it at all. Yeah, we, we see better than your monitor for sure. But uh... I'm going to keep adding these value sets. I'm pulling the turquoise and the thalo blue together, making that cooler value. You can always modify with white. Come here and maybe pull out kind of a Y reflection in this water. Not a little cool here. I just went on this edge and I just stroked along that and defined that. There's some nice, I want that to have enough pigment on it. I'm going to come under his little feet and spread that down so it's press, wiggle back, and then a little stroke there, a little bit of a dark value here. 
then come and add a little more white to my paint. Still got the blue on it. And I can even come up here and add this sort of little darker than what I have here. So a couple little dark reflections coming down. Coming from behind him. Maybe a few sort of thought about over here. Not much. Be light about it up here. You don't want a lot of it. You don't want much. And there. Soften those out. Bring this cooler color behind him. Even put some of this in there. And I'm doing pretty good here. I need to lighten this up a lot down here. So I'm going to get a lot of white on my brush. I'm going to make sure that I come under here. I'm going to press the pigment down and let that make a darker line. But I'm lightening this up as it comes here. You can get more into the turquoise and a lot more into the white. It's also very light. And we'll just make sure that this is coming down here. And then as I'm coming up into this light area, I'm going to get back into my dry brushing feeling so that these two areas sort of marry together. And you can see if there's any little darker pigment, I blend that out. Can we blending that out? Mm -hmm. Now I've come through and I've started to lighten some of that space so that a few little darker strokes can exist here. But there's a lighter overall value. We'll rinse out. I'm going to look real quick and hopefully I can catch this, pull this all together with my highlight. Nice. That's the goal. Can't see on the monitor though. <laughs> Which is weird because I can kind of see the polar bears on the monitor. I'm going to grab some just white on my brush. It's okay if it gets a little of the blue pigment on it. I'm going to come from the side and just make a broken water reflection and maybe something right here soft see how these are light the pressure is super soft to get these now up here it's sort of interesting and i'm gonna wipe my brush off because it's i'm gonna push up and Make some slightly lighter churning water. Can you see this happening? Oh, yeah. It can have a little pigment on, on the white. You want a little so that when you put pure white out, it reads as pure, but definitely this should be reading as a highlight. Coming through here. And then we'll, I come right on the edge of my brush and I press up and I come down and I soften back. Here we go. Just making sure that there's little bits of dappled random sun. See, I'm on the edge of my brush. I'm just scrubbing a little bit back and forth, letting little bits of pigment come down and then softening them out. And you can see that I'm starting to get my upper part lit. I'm going to take a mid tone white and Make sure that this is a little blended over here. I've added a little blue into the white, but it's lighter than the background. I'm just making sure. I'm going to put out a little more white on my canvas, on my palette, as I continue to highlight down my canvas.
And about now I can add a little Indian yellow into the mix. It, there's not a lot on this painting. Where it is though, it matters because it, it really says sunlight, which mm -hmm. is why we've kind of reserved it for around the bear sort of centrally and in a couple reflections. As you can see, this is quite aqua, quite green. Dip my brush in the water, drag off the extra, get a little of the aqua pigment on my brush. And then I kind of brush like this to sort of offload the extra. I'm going to get into my white and just make sure that I've got a very light color that isn't pure white, but it's as close to it as I can get it. It's still showing some differences. I'm going to come along here. Let's very like on the tip of a brush. If you have to switch to a round brush to do this where you go light and then you press a little heavy swing back heavier. See, so you're getting sort of a thick and thin stroke. Maybe there's a couple little dots of water reflection right there. You can even make a little bit of light that like seems to be haloing around him. Now we're in this range. Just adding the pigment to my white, but I still need it to be white. Mm -hmm. That's just really about what I'm trying to do is make sure that I'm showing this. I'm going to come here. Lighten this in here. Can you guys see the lightning? There's, there's definitely the blues. So you can't see the green? Not as much. I'm going to see what I can do. Oh, I there's... can't wait to the high dynamic cameras happen. And it's... I'm being a genius. You just don't know it. It's, so it's, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what... Yeah, there's just not a whole lot I can do, unfortunately, on some of this. Uh... Well, what you want to pay attention to in this, even though the cameras aren't seeing all of our colors, is that you need to have values. You need to have at least four values in your water. You need to have your deep shadows. You need to have your midtones, and you need to have your high, high highlights. We definitely have the values. So there's definitely the low, middle, and high tones. It's just it's missing that that beautiful, subtle green tone. Unfortunately, I'm just peeking around the corner, and it and I'm gonna see if I can adjust RoboCam a little bit more to get it while we're playing here. Okay. Um, so that as we get to the end of the painting, but uh, it's likely to start shifting uh, from the other cameras. So let me see how I can we'll do that. See. We're gonna we're gonna give it a go. Yeah. I'm gonna come in where I have this dark shadow here, and I'm gonna highlight just on the inside. See me on the tip of my brush there, and then come in along this, and then as I come through here, it's gonna soften and taper off. You can add just a smidge. You can't get too deep with it once it gets into the shadow range. And put a heavier one here. Little wiggle one that comes down there. They have just broken it up. And it's just showing that water wiggle. Not all the way white, but really close to it. So let's come inside this. We come inside the line of it. Bring that down. And then also, let's come around the top of it. Bring this out. And then just bring that to the center there. And I like to, I've got this little curve. I'm going to add some highlight where this light is coming down. Little dashes. So you can see it's stronger. These highlights are stronger through this Convex. If you need to switch brushes to give you lo different lines, that is okay to do. And these little lines down here, through here. Over the dark. And so you can see we're leaving our midtones. And we're accenting these dark values with these white lights, not on both sides necessarily, but where we can see 
and some light might be I come along this dark value and then I brush brush come from the outside here and really raise this I'm gonna make this a very strong light mark While John is getting this done, is it is it looking any better or? You can see me going around these dark values, right? That's what I'm doing is I'm pushing around these dark values. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh, I might come and just do one of these sort of wrapped highlights here. It's just always nice to, to run uh, little bits of the pop where you can. You can come down here between the bears. I mean, there are two paws. Very lightly. That's a little more of this sort of like speckled light reflection. Right, that's happening. Now I'm going to just get a smidge of my yellow on my brush. And that's going to work into my aqua. Can you see that? That's just a, a little bit of a pop. And you can even come through and just hit a couple places, especially here in the center with this slightly more yellow cast of light. I don't know if they can see that. Just a little bit. You have to, this is like, like spice. You gotta be sort of careful with it. Coming here. Mm. Well, that puts into context the question, like, why isn't it green? And I was like, I don't know. It's super green to me. <laughs> How much more green could it be? So I'm taking my um, phthalo turquoise. I'm going to get a clump of dry paint there. And I'm mixing it with my phthalo blue. And so what were you saying, babe? Up some deep reflections and a couple of these especially through here I'm gonna make sure that there's an extra level of dark right here at this corner extra level of dark right here at this corner You pull that down a bit. And you can always come and hit your white again. And just make sure, see I'm wiggling here, I've hit my white, that you're breaking up some light here too. See how we're doing? Yeah, I do, that's really cool. Just creating that sort of fun. It's like an abstract, paint it like an abstract. Adding some white. Just following the flow of the water at this point. Making sure I've got some nice highlights, some nice low lights, and now I get to do the funnest thing in the world. What's that? Well, I get to put some sunlight here, but then I get to paint the bears, and the bears are super fun. The bears. So I'm gonna take just a little of my Indian yellow. It's a very transparent yellow, um, sometimes if you don't have it, you can absolutely just do CAD. If you if you want closer exchanges, you can look in your box for maybe Gambage, maybe Deluride, uh, CAD Yellow Deep. Right? I'm going to get this quite with the white, if I can. Get a touch of the turquoise. I'm going to come here. I'm going to just on the edge of my brush. See, I'm just like touching a couple places with this. 
just like on the angle. You could do this on the edge of a braid. You could do this with a round. But it's really about just softly catching some of it. And don't make like dashes. So just to show you this, because this is a great light effect to understand. Um, I wonder if I should do it with a dark color. So you can see it on the white canvas. Mm. I will just do it with our turquoise. So it would be like we're doing this with the yellow where we're just softly touching some spots on the canvas. You can see me wiggling the brush back and forth, right? And I'm still following the curve of what I have. I'm just kissing this with some yellow. I'm not doing this, right? Because look what that would do. Being random and soft. And you guys see that? Yeah. So that's how I'm getting that. I don't know if that helps, but that's how I'm getting that. Yes. So I'm pulling out some white. Again, I've cleaned a, a, most of the aqua off my brush. So it's still pretty, pretty yellow. And I'm going to just make sure that this comes down this way a little bit. I'm going to get load a little more white on my brush. And on the tip, I'm going to make some soft, small little microwaves in the convex that are just right there. Just so I have them. And now I get to paint my bears. I'm so excited. Yay! Yay! Yay bears! The bears. And they were, uh, I was being reminded huh. that the bears do not have white fur. They have translucent fur that looks white because it reflects light inside it as a thermal blanket to keep them warm. Feeling kind of under evolved next to the bears. Because let me tell you, I don't fare well in light at all. I tell you what, standing <laughs> next to a bear, you would feel very under evolved. Those things, are, I think, are like eight plus feet tall and they weigh like, uh, like, 800 pounds they're like monsters they're huge they're huge <laughs> they're not they're, i mean like i'm sure they're cuddly to each other but i mean as snuggly as they look they're like you know i saw a picture of one peering up at a boat and it was like it stood up and like it was i was like man i'm afraid and i'm like in the looking at people in a picture <laughs> yeah a big bear. I, I know what you mean there <laughs> i'm gonna miss my paint real quick but they're cute and cuddly when they're swimming they're cute and cuddly when they're swimming so kind of like this water, I have to sort of paint in some mid ranges and then add highlights and my deep shadows. And I'm going to use smaller brushes to do that. You can see I put out some smaller brushes. I've got a number four Cambridge, a number two silver, a number two Cambridge, and I'll probably hang in there. You could use your number four cat's tongue. You could use, you know, just anything that's gonna be small enough to give you some control. And I'm going to just pull out a little of my turquoise that I mixed earlier. I'm going to get this sort of mid color. Mm -hmm. Not my darkest shadow. It's not my lightest one. And I'm going to start painting in Mr. Fuzzy Paints. Yes. I actually really like um, the, the softness I get from the bristles when I'm making these little back and forth strokes. So that to me is like a feature. So when I come tap the little foot in, I can make sure like I'm sort of tapping in, if you can see how I'm doing, the little feet. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would be a good one to show on the white canvas. So they can kind of see how the implied texture happens. It builds up, All right? I'm just coming along here. The other reason why his being outlined in yellow, these guys being outlined in yellow was good, is that I do a yellow halo, light halo around them. Mm. And so that works well together. All right, still pulling out my color. Just painting him up. Well, cats just just wished everybody in the room and all of the mods and you and me uh, uh, 
a happy day. Just it was just Aww, a nice. You know, hope you. everyone's having a ha- having a great day, and I hope you're having a great day too, cats. So thank you. I kind of like do the soft little brushstroke where it's it's like you can see his little claws, but you don't really see his little claws. So just they're they're just the snuggliest of claws. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Now, to keep track of this interior paw, right, I'm going to actually just paint around this, and that's one that I'll come back and paint with its value later. Ah. Uh. Because I've got to keep track of where it is. As I'm coming up his head, I can be lightening my base color, even some, because his head back right is darker than the sky around him but still lighter than his main body color you got to figure out how to make him darker but yet lighter <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be darker than the water he's reflecting in is the kind of range you're looking at And what's wonderful is the way that these colors layer up. You can use them to glaze and create values that feel like, you know, the shadow values. Paying attention to his little, mm. his little fuzzy nose. He's got a little ear tapping in that ear. So I'm just using the brush to come back and just carefully tap it, tap it in. And it's just soft. Grab white whenever you need it. And when I load up, I pull, pull, pull. I flip the brush and I pull, pull, pull. That's how I get my brush loaded up. That is why sometimes my uh, brush goes further with paint. Even when you guys are painting the same brush and the same paint. Mm. I have a different moisture amount on my brush and I have a different load. I'm tapping those little toes. I've sort of suggested in... The little silhouette of them that I have. There we go. Looking good. I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of water because it was drying out. Pull out some more of my turquoise. And we're going to get him painted in. I'm going to start out this color and his up top and then kind of darken him as I go down, I think. So his little paw goes tap, 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 tap. Just the nicest of paws. Yeah, they seem soft. They have claws, but we don't see them for this painting. They're in snuggly mode. We see the nice little curve of his elbow. I'm just pulling this back. And you can see, again, this nice softness that I can just dry brush in there. It's just fantastic. Just tap, tap, tap. Now let's tap him in a little ear. So I just take this brush on its little corner and I just press out and stroke back and that's how I get the little nub that's his ear. Hmm. I'm not a brilliant ear painter. I'm just saying sometimes you just got to tap, tap. That looks good. So back here, I can actually, he's so dark, in fact, that I can come and actually pull a whole dar darker value of the turquoise to come back. We'll be back with like Salo Blue and all kinds of things to darken him up. We can start to pull that in. You guys can probably see right now why this is a two hoop painting. Because <laughs> hmm. there's just a lot of values to contend with and a lot of techniques to marry together on top of, you know, getting everything on the canvas where you want it. There's just a lot. None of them are impossible or difficult themselves intrinsically to do. It's just putting them all together can be a lot. I might come around here for his little and there. Let's tap out some little underwater swim. They swim so well. Putting a little phthalo blue in my 
aqua comes down. And once we have these guys laid in, then we can do all the subtle awesomeness that makes them have shape blurrily underwater. It's so cool. Hmm. And this is the foundation of a lot of what we're painting. Um, you know, it's like uh, when everyone asks me for color exchanges, right? There's a lot you can do with color. More important than color, though, is value. Mm -hmm. You can paint a lot of crazy colors or different colors. If your values are good, the painting's going to be good. Even if you, like, change it up a lot. And really experienced artists with a lot of paint mixing skills will often do that. They'll, like, take, you know, concept and change up the colors a great deal to something that, you know, tells a more pleasing story to them. Yeah. All right. So I've got him in. You can kind of see there's a lighter value and some darker value, some lighter hair and some other values. And now... We can turn these little guys. I'm going to get out of my four. I'm going to miss my paint. I haven't even had to use glazing medium, which is cool. <laughs> I'm going to get my number two. Yeah, it's, it's right. really, I was, I was surprised you haven't used that much at all. No, it just, um, when I first did, I had to use quite a lot, but it may have been that the day was just incredibly dry. Hmm. That happens to me. Your, your paint is very impacted by your environment. Yeah, we've I've witnessed that a lot more here. Mm -hmm. Just as a like stage hand, you know, mm -hmm. as a, like we got to get water or spray or different things to just accommodate the show. I guess I I've become more aware of those things. So yeah, it's just you just gotta. It's just a thing. So I'm gonna mix a slightly bluer version of my turquoise. I'm gonna come here. Might add a smidge of white to it because it's not quite our darkest, darkest shade, but it's pretty dark. And I'm going to come under his little bum bum. Yeah. Right under his little bum bum. I'm shading up. Right. I am coming around here. I'm leaving sort of a lighter value here. I'm down the paw. And then where we are at the paw, I'm going to darken this up. One more value. Still being very soft and scumbly with my stroke. You can see I'm kind of very scumbly here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come back from the belly a bit. Maybe a little more of the blue. Getting under this paw. So I was. And then on this side, it's just. We're going to lighten it again, but I guess got to get this in. Now in this, in this wonderful make-believe world here, you'd have to be a pretty brave diver to get this picture. But jo yes. Joanne was thinking maybe this is more of like a Kraken eye view. Maybe there's a, a <laughs> Kevin down here taking this photo for us. Kevin's <laughs> polar cousins. <laughs> <laughs> although, although Gail was like, no, Kevin's definitely a warmer water Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably why these bears are fine, because he's like, I'm not swimming up there to get nobody. Mm -mm. He, he's not going to tickle the bears. So this is slightly more to the phthalo blue, right? Which now we have warm and cool shadows, don't we, mm. on the bear, interestingly enough, because we're playing between this turquoise and the phthalo. So even though they're both kind of warm, they're in relationship to each other, right? Kind of coming around here. And then down the paw a bit. Just softly over this paw. Now this is sort of interesting. I'm going to get my turquoise, just my pure turquoise. And I'm going to come at the end of his paw. I'm going to brush this up his leg just a touch. Letting the outer bit be a little bit in a highlight. And then right here at his belly, above his little bum bum, we need another dark shadow. Get your turquoise. Come right here. And from the paw down, I'm going to just... Make this darker. You can see me pulling it across. Mm 
a little gummy on me because it's been trying. <laughs> That's fine. Because what I need is the value more than anything. And then I'm going to take it down, a little of it, down this part of his leg, but not all the way to the end. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. There we go. I'm come right up here. Okay. So I'm going to wipe off. And I think I'm going to get a little more blue on my brush and maybe some white. But I still want it to be kind of blue. I'm going to come under here. So this is darker. You can see it's darker. Up into the neck. Softly, softly, softly with this blue. And I'm going to bring a little shadow on the elbow, down the center, a little bit of this, this arm. You can see it doesn't go all the way to the paw. I'm get a little of my turquoise and blue. And I'm going to make sure that I just put a little shadow on the paw. And then maybe another little shadow right here at the elbow. You can kind of see it there. Yeah. Just a slightly darker value. Now I'm going to get my blue and my white. I'm going to start dealing with this paw here, which is an interesting thing to paint because all you're really painting is a subtle bunch of light and shadows that are happening to the paw. Hmm. So I'm going to go back. I'm around this because it's curled forward in the swim. Got that rounded. I'm going to get a little more of my turquoise on my brush. Oh, definitely wipe off though because I'm getting a little loaded. So a little more turquoise on my brush. I'm going to get some white. And I'm going to come behind the paw with this highlight. You can just barely edge the paw. I'm going to bring the, a little highlight to the front. And I'm going to start highlighting at his back now. So this is the aqua, the turquoise. And I'm making sure that his, this backside is lighter. Using just micro mixes of my turquoise. And I'm just coming along here. And you can see he's just starting to take shape. He just starts to take shape. Yeah. A little bit here with his little elbow. He's nice and down the side. You can pop a little bit at that leg right there. Mm hmm. Right. Now we're going to work his head. So definitely in the turquoise. He's got some interesting, you know, situation here because his head needs to be darker than what is right here so the trick is, is i've got to lighten it or darken him and what i'm going to actually do and this is probably something that could be happening to you is i'm going to take a little of my white i'm going to come along here on the front of his head and i'm going to just feather that into the con concave see how much whiter that is yeah and that's going to give me the value adjustment I need. I need that much difference. He's light, but that means that the background around him has to be light enough. Same here. And the trick is just to feather that into the convex if you're making those adjustments. And it still just adds to the center of this being lit up, so that's okay. Pulling my turquoise and now my white paint because I can now definitely, definitely do some little shading on him. He can be a little bit lighter up here now. And I can leave his little, some of his little jaw a little bit darker. And now it's a lot easier to get. 
Now, Fishhorn Com- said, "Oh, sorry." Yeah, no, no, I was say Fishhorn just said that last paw. It was just like a slap to the face. It was awesome. How you explain that? <laughs> what was that helpful? Yes, just the the, so the the shadowing, the layering. That's like it just awesome. It's all about those shadows. It is. It's just about these little values. I'm getting just a little of my aqua here, and maybe a little of my thalo blue. Oh. Right here. Okay. I'm just wanting just a little dusting of this. I'm gonna come here right at the tip. And just put that shadow there. Make sure we're good. Make sure we're good right here. And then I want to just a smidge. This one is the hard one. <laughs> I know we can do it, so let's do it together. I just want to make sure that his nose is just an ever touch darker. You see that? Just a little bit. Dude. Not a big deal, but it's just, it's a big deal. Lynn said it's possum. Is it possum? It's possum. All right. He needs one more highlight. So we're going to get our brush right into the white. It's okay that it's going to tint with a little of our paint color. Thank you, Lynn. I'm powered by puns. <laughs> and I'm going to make a ocean reflection right there. Right, a little bit stroked around his paw. Right here at his shoulder. And then a little along the back. But not a lot. It's just too much and then you got to go take it out. I might already have too much. Get back into my turquoise. If I do, I can very carefully... Say, pull that back. There we go. See, it's so nice when you find like just another shade, a little bit up, and then you're like, oh, perfect. Right, that, perfect. I'm gonna take that on across the front of this paw right here. Oh, that those little smoothing blendings just like have. Uh, it's all of a sudden like a went, whole bear. It's just like whoa! You just turned three dimensional there in the water. <laughs> just sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. It's like dimensional bear now. Dimensional bear in shadow in the water. It's crazy. It is. So I'm going to take my number two uh, ruby satin. I could do one of my, if I had the, I could do one of my art Sherpas. But what you want is a brush that gives you a good edge. You can do a round or a bright. Um, just whatever you can get a good fine line with. And I'm going to take a little of my Indian yellow and a little of my titanium white. I'm going to load up. And then I've got to stroke his light halo around him. It's soft. All right, come in here. A little more white on it, don't want it too yellow. And then around, uh, John. Mm hmm. Yeah, <laughs> a little visitor. <laughs> we have we have another little bear visiting. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's what happens when we're on break. <laughs> so I'm gonna light on the back side. I'm gonna pull this down. Am I doing okay, sweetie? Oh yeah, you're doing great. I can see you. Okay. All right. Actually, asking the little one. Fishhorn says it's unbearably cute. I'm going to come down and light this paw a little bit, but not quite all the way at the tip there. Come through the belly. Accentuate oh. a little. And then just a little bit right there. You're just barely putting any any on there, right? Barely. This is just. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> all right. Fine. <sighs> Over here. And then just around this. You can see I'm just blocking in these shapes. This is one of my favorite paintings I've gotten to do with everybody. Like to actually just do this painting is like my fave. Mm -hmm. I love the colors. I love the techniques. I love the process here so much. I'm just very carefully outlining just a couple little things. 
And maybe another hand. Ah! There oh, there go. he is. He's good. You can, at this minute, do one last really nice finishing touch. Let me get mm -hmm. a little yellow on here. You just want it to... The yellow really helps it stand out as as the sunlight coming through it just mentally. So I'm going to make one little mark here. A little tap here. There we go. Caught, caught, caught some light. Yeah. Now we got a little pause. And you sometimes you need a little pause. You got to pause for the pause. Other oh, bear, and then we're done. Oh yeah. Look at our bears. They're, They're just swimming in the water, so aren't they? Cute. <laughs> so, so cute. So cute. The bears in the water swimming. I mean, can you imagine this big over your sofa? Every time you looked at it, you'd be like, oh, I'm just so relaxed. Yeah. So again, I've got to make sure that he's got a fairly light aspect around him. Because I'm going to really want to lighten up his head. I'll make sure that I've got some of the pigment on my brush, but it needs to be super light. I'm going to come through the front. Just making sure this is light enough right here. Because it can be about as light as we want it to be. Right here. And I'll just bring this up a little bit. So that the lens is well reflected and distributed. So I'm taking that around, mm -hmm. making sure it's just distributed between our little dudes. The sparkling light that's hitting their water. Now I'm going to take my brush and pull just a hint of my aqua. It's going to be darker than my sunlight. And I'm going to paint him in with just that lighter color. And he's much lighter than his friend, even. So that tells us a little something about the angle of the light that's hitting the bears. Yeah. And his face is even more light than his swimming partner's face. Yeah. So it's sort of fun for me. I like it. Tapping that down. And I'm probably going to switch back to my Cambridge. Because I like that soft scruffliness. I'm just getting some, some detailing in. Because I painted out a little of his detailing. So I'm going to take my dark value here. And make sure that I don't completely erase... Just a little bit of his face that just says, as a bear. <laughs> now I can snip it back. That happens. Sometimes you're like painting something and it just takes out more than you would like. So you got to put it back. There he is. You got to find your little character again. Be like, what's going on? And he's going to be like, I'm swimming. What are you doing? Then you'd be like, I'm swimming too, man. Yeah. All right. So getting my aqua and my white. Making my light top of the bear. I'm going to make sure that the ear is where I want it to be. There we go. Painting. Ruffling into the foot. Always super fun. Let's get a really light light. Take this. There we go. And down his back just a smidge. Up the front. Maybe a little on the leg. Not the whole highlight on the leg. Okay. 
pulling that back. And then he's going to get more into the blue. I'm still going to put some turquoise in, but it's more into the blue. Because he's going to get darker and cooler as he goes down. A little more blue. All right, so push this in here. Little touch of his paw. Pulling this down. Little more blue. There's still some white in it, but it's just it's just cooler. It has a little le yes less yellow in it. We're just pulling this long shadow down at first. A little of the blue in the turquoise for the first value coming in the leg. This has got to be a little more in shadow, right? So we, at this point, you know, we're going to have a nice highlight probably up at his knee and at the front of his paw, depending on the angle of the leg. And then we know there's another leg here. And this is really fun because, like, when you do highlight it and it pops out, it's just really cool when it, when it actually shows up. But I want to pull a little of this just pure blue down into this paw, just a smidge, to the end, and coming up the ankle a little bit. Let's get a little white and a little of our turquoise. A little more white, but not much. We want just a slightly lighter value right here at the bum bum. It's bum bum. I'm going to start to pull this around his front and then up the tummy just a little bit. See that? Just a little bit right there. Now I've got those in. I am going to get, actually I think it'll be easiest to see the highlight and this is going to be, I'm going to do a weird thing. I'm going to add just a smidge of my Indian yellow to my phthalo turquoise and get a little of my white here. And right here, coming off his subtle little bend, I'm going to curve line up and then curve it back. That is going to be the front of his little swimming leg. And I'm going to softly pull back this highlight right here. Into the paw just a smidge. Maybe put a little right there. And start. Creating this greener highlight right here, up his front. Much lighter, isn't it? Let's get one more right here at the knee and along the foot. Doing pretty good. Yeah. So once we have those in, all we've got to do is give him a couple deep shadows and he's going to start taking shape. So we're going to get some of our pure turquoise. And just right here, we're going to pull this, his, one of his darkest shadows in. And we're also going to put one right here at the front of this leg and paw. Kind of coming down, kind of happening. And then I'm going to come get some just thalo. And touch this again right here. You can even add a little phthalo right there. And in the center of that little highlight. See how he's doing? Yep. He's a bear. He's a bear. He's a bear. Definitely a bear. Definitely a bear. I'm going to get some more white here. And I'm going to make sure that I've got a nice little bridge value between what's happening on the head and kind of starting into him a bit. And a little tiny, 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 tiny. Right here. 
hair. Now, back to our number two from uh, our good detail number two from Ruby Sutton. We're going to get our brush wet. Get a little of our Indian yellow. And And if you didn't know, it's called that because it comes from India. Hmm. They got a mango leaf. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. There's a leaf. I'm going to put a little highlight right here. And then just a bit around his paw. And coming down. Strong on his little belly here. Strong on the knee. Just a little bit right there. And right here on the inside leg coming down. Well, maybe a little bit coming on the back side. And then up his little back, his little bum bum. They like that. I like it. They say it's very nice, Sherpa. <laughs> Let's just take this little highlight behind this little ear. And that's him. Wow. Boy, that just came together. Yeah, it really did. And that's really, other than you can keep tweaking, you know, your water events and you can add little touches of like, you can come a couple places and be like, you know, maybe a nice highlight on some water and then. Oh, the yeah. Inside. Those are nice. That's nice. Yeah. Because that's what water likes to do, man. It likes to have a couple. Distinctive. Highlights. Oh, that wow. can happen. That adds a lot there. There's that little. It does. And this is, this is where water uh, makes it or breaks it. In those highlights? The, the highlights are the yummy sauce of water reflection. Yeah. And we can put some of these bright, bright ones in. The paint is just thick, and I just touch the canvas with a few of those and add and that come little, over and little impasto tweaking. You can do a couple little taps, and that's like sparkles. Like sparkles. I like that. You just pick places that you had highlights, but find moments where, you know, they could be more focused. And they are. Wow. You got to sign it now. I do. We gotta sign I feel it. like I should. It needs to be Sherpa signed. So see, you can paint underwater. Yes. Totally do it. Yes. It's no. not that stressful. And the reason I'm doing this with Happy Little Bears is so I can trick a whole bunch of you into learning this technique so we can do some people swimming underwater. Yes. Now, we are not actually <laughs> underwater painting, but no. we are painting a painting that of is- Of things that are underwater. Of, of things that are underwater. Yeah. In this particular case, um, because of the values of this, I find it's best just for me to sign this in white. Like my name is like a little, you know, reflection in a in the water, mm. and I just hide it between two little reflections. There you go. There you are. That's fantastic. We signed it. We named it. We painted two fat little happy bears swimming in the water. Yep. And I know somewhere in there you were like, I don't think she knows what she's doing. I this don't think. And then you're like, then you're like, she totally knows what she's doing. No, this was great. Everybody has loved this. It's, oh, excuse me. Hmm? Oh. Bless you. <laughs> Bless all of you at home, too. Oh, boy. Sneezes snook up on me. The sneezes do that. They did. So this, this hopefully is kind of opening that door to like, oh, this is how you can paint cold. This is how you can paint water. This is how you can paint some of these things. I cannot wait to see your paintings. Definitely share them on the website or on Instagram or Twitter or in our Facebook group or just anywhere that you'd love to share the painting with us. John loves those. I do too. We like totally stock you guys. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. 
We're going to see you tomorrow to paint that adorable little snowman because it's 12 days live. Oh, got to remind them of the website. Oh, and go to the website Pro to see the entire calendar. Yeah. And to get the traceable for this and information about upcoming events. Mm -hmm. We want to see you guys at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.